Hey everybody, welcome to Borderline. Uh, my name is Lonnie. Uh, today we're going to go through the Extreme 20, um, our curbing trailer. Uh, we have uh, several different examples for you today that you can take a look at, uh, some different colors. We have uh, a bumper pull, a gooseneck, um, and uh, you know, so we wanna, we wanna show you all the different features of these, uh, of these trailers that really set us apart from uh, everywhere else, or everybody else, excuse me. Um, first things first, is the actual trailer itself. Uh, the base of the trailer uh, is made by H&W Manufacturing. Uh, they're based out of South Dakota. Um, they uh, build these trailers for us uh, with a steel deck. Um, so that way we can mount everything onto the, uh, onto the surface. These trailers right here, um, uh, everything is, is attached and bolted on to the actual trailer itself. So the great thing about this is if you really wanted to use this in the off season, let's say to do snow removal, um, you know, part of your landscape company, um, all this is removable. Um, so your, your main compartment is bolted on along with your sand bin and your mixer, um, a forklift uh, or a skid steer, and about uh, a half hour you can have all this thing, uh, you know, this whole thing removed. So that gives you a full flatbed that you can use uh, for something else. Um, the base of the trailer itself is is a 20, 20 foot deck. So your total length of the trailer is 24 uh, when we're talking about a bumper pull. Uh, um, it's a little bit misleading. Uh, some other manufacturers out there will give you the length of the trailer, um, but, uh, but they're actually telling you the length from tip to tip. So if they have a 23 foot trailer, technically their, their actual deck space is maybe 18 um, or a little bit shorter depending on what trailer you're getting. Um, this is a 20 foot deck, um, so you're gonna have plenty of space for, for you know, your sand and, and all your equipment on the inside. Uh, the, the tongue, if you wanna take a look over here, the tongue on a bumper pull is four feet. Um, you know, there's different manufacturers out there that have longer tongues and things like that, but uh, so this bumper pull um, is technically 24 feet long. We do call it an extreme 20 because we're mainly concerned with that deck space and that flat deck um, because that's where you're putting all your stuff. One thing that, that uh, our manufacturer does for us is automatically put on the cold weather, cold weather harnesses. Um, so for us up in the north here, uh, if we didn't have these, these would be really stiff in the winter. Um, so that's one good thing that, uh, that they put on there. Um, if you do follow us online, YouTube, and any of our groups, um, uh, you realize that we are constantly adding and changing things to these trailers based on what our customers tell us, uh, my own crews, um, and, and a lot of our trainers around the country. Uh, when they bring up ideas, uh, you know, and throw it our way, hey, what about this, what about that? I just relay those messages to our, uh, uh, to our fab guys and our welders, um, and they come up with things that uh, sometimes I don't even think about or, or uh, or my crew doesn't even think about. So there's lots of new things that we're adding to these trailers, even in the next couple months. Um, it is February, 2024. So what you're seeing on this trailer right now, actually in another month, there could be a couple things added to that. Um, same with this box right here. We set this on the side because we are doing mounts on these bumper poles now, um, where these are going to be on the front. You got obviously some wasted space here. So just to put that on the front, just to you know put your gas can or something like that. Um, so that, that's gonna be something that's gonna be added here in the near future. Another thing we like to do, and this is an option for, uh, for anybody, um, we are a, a, a dealer for shocker hitches. Uh, this is an air ride system. Um, so this is mounted right onto the trailer um, and it really makes a, a, a softer ride when you're pulling these trailers. Obviously you're pulling some weight. Um, and so uh, to get that jarring uh, softened, uh, we also offer that on the on the gooseneck version. Uh, it really, really makes things nice. But that's an option that uh, that anybody can put on their trailer. Um, if we uh, move to the back, just to explain this uh, the flatbed a little bit more, um, what we have H and W do is that, you know they're automatically using Dexter axles, which are the industry norm. Um, that is the best uh, the best axles out there. Um, we have them put on 14 ply G rated tires to begin with. Um, we used to use just regular trailer tires in the past. Uh, it's just uh, a little bit more peace of mind when you're in that, in that tight cul-de-sac and you got all that weight on here. To get that sidewall protection is, is, uh, is something that you really need. 
Um, so these are 7,000 pound axles. So obviously your total gross for this is gonna be 14,000 pounds. Um, the weight of the whole trailer as you see it right now uh, with the mixer, with everything on top is about 4,600 pounds. So that gives you, you know, um, a lot of extra weight that you can put on here. Uh, four tons of sand, your Portland and all your equipment. Um, and uh, you can... as we go to the back here, um, they automatically put side rails on for us, uh, step sides. Uh, this can, can be a little dangerous, you know, jumping up and down here if you don't have that, that uh, step side, um, especially in the morning when there's dew and it's wet and stuff like that. So this, that's on both sides um, and, uh, you know, makes, makes things a, a lot safer and a lot better for everybody. Uh, these are LED uh, tail lights um, and so on. Uh, the, uh, uh, the trailer is a great pull and, uh, you know, everything is weighted perfectly. Okay, as far as mixers, um, over the years, especially with the COVID, uh, COVID years, we had, uh, uh, there's trouble getting certain mixers. Uh, you know, we, we like to use Whiteman mixers, uh, you know, for the last 20 some years, um, really durable uh, poly drums. Um, you know, sometimes those are kind of hard to get. We've switched from Whiteman's to Essex uh, to Brave Pros. They're all good mixers. They all use the same Honda engine. Um, uh, actually, Essex and uh, Whiteman are made by Multiquip. It's made in the same factory. It is just a little bit different. Uh, this is a steel drum uh, instead of a poly. Uh, they're both good um, and you're not going to have any issues. Uh, Brave Pros that we use, same thing. Uh, great Honda engine. Um, uh, so, you know, when they're mounted like this, and it's it's like anything else, you, you take care of your you take care of your equipment, uh, no matter what kind it is. You do your maintenance, and they're going to last a long, long time. Uh, there's a lot of buddies that I have that like the steel drum because eventually, over years, that starts to wear thin, and you can actually weld another piece of steel here. Poly drum, if you wear a hole in there over the years, it's a little bit harder to fix uh, with fiberglass and things like that. So there's pros and cons to all those kind kind of things. Um, so we have a Honda. You know, these are Honda GX 240s um, and all three of them have the same. Um, so it, it just depends on what we have in stock. Uh, right now we have Essex in stock and, and some Brave Pros and uh, you know, the Whitemans have just been, uh, you know, kind of difficult to get. Okay, so put that back down. So if we hop up here and I'll show you the sand bin, there's, there's a reason why we are doing certain things here. Okay, so we have a 20 foot deck we wanted to make sure our compartment is, is large enough. So that's going to be eight feet long. Um, it is six foot four tall. You know, I'm 5'8". I'm just a short, stumpy guy. Uh, there's plenty of uh, clearance, uh, you know, inside to walk in. Um, it doesn't make any sense to us to have a trailer that's, um, you know, for years they were four feet tall. Um, so you had to, you know, you're basically hitting your head on the ceiling when you're trying to get your equipment on it. It just makes no sense. Imagine a carpenter showing up with his, with his, uh, with his trailer, uh, with his job shack or whatever. And uh, every time he goes in there to get, a, to get a hammer or some equipment, he's got to duck down because he's going to hit his head on the roof. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so um, we have eight foot long compartment here, which, which leaves obviously 12 foot of space back here. This sand bin is nine feet long. Now that's, that's pretty big and long. Um, so what we've done is actually reduce the height of the sides um, so guys don't overload these, okay? Because it's a bigger sand bin, uh, that doesn't mean that you can you know, put six tons of sand back here because you're gonna be overloaded. So we've reduced the sides, which also makes it a little bit easier to step over. Uh, the main reason for making this the length that it is, depending on where you're getting your sand, for us, we get our sand at a big uh, gravel yard. Um, it, it, they got huge uh, earth movers, uh, and when they come in and they're dumping sand, uh, the buckets are so big uh, that they have to come in kind of at an angle and they spill all over the place. Uh, with our old trailers, we only had seven feet of space here. Now with a nine footer, um, they can come in with that eight foot bucket and actually come in from the side, it makes it a little bit easier, okay? So it's, it's, there's a reason for everything that we're doing here, okay? It's not just for looks, it's not for this. Um, it's, it's, it's for your business to make it, make it as uh, efficient as possible. You know, a simple shelf like this, um, this guy back here has access to his admixtures, his chemicals, his colors. Uh, this is really, really super simple. Got that idea from a Kerber uh, that we sold our trailer to. Uh, and uh, I asked him if we could put that on the trailer because it was his idea. Fantastic. Um, there's basically, when you look at curbing, 
there's three essential three uh, components. Okay, you got your sand, Portland, and water. Okay, um, if you have a trailer that can only accommodate one of those things, let's say for years it was just sand. Uh, there's not enough room for your Portland, so you had to put the Portland on the back of your truck, and then you had to have 200 feet of hose to hook up to the customer's house to use their water so you can make their product. To me, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You have to be able to haul all the materials with you and be a mobile batch plant and not rely on your customer to give you part of the material, let's say the water, so you can charge them for the product. It doesn't make any sense. So when we, when we designed these, okay, we wanted to make sure there was easy access to the Portland. Okay? The, guy that's mix, the guy that's mixing back here, this is the worst job on the crew. Okay? You're out in the sun the whole time, you're by yourself, and essentially, if you're doing a full day's work, you're shoveling four to five tons of sand a day. Okay, so this is not a fun job. Um, and if we didn't have access to a, a place to put your Portland, um, now he's got to get off the trailer to maybe go to the truck to get to Portland because that's where you're storing your Portland. Okay, so efficiency wise, you're only moving this basically once. So we load this in the morning or in the afternoon when we're done. When that guy's going back and forth, he doesn't have to bend over. He's grabbing that and he's putting it into the mixer at waist height. Okay. Um, if you don't have that space and you're putting your Portland on your trailer or, or excuse me, your truck at the beginning of the job, two of the guys have to go to the truck, get all that Portland and typically guys would stack them on the fender. Okay. So the beginning of the job, you're wasting time moving that Portland. And then again, the mixer now has to grab that and move it a second time on the job when it should only be moved once, okay? You're bending over and you're not bending over, okay? So anything that creates as much efficiency back here as possible is going to put more curb on the ground in less amount of time and this guy is not gonna be as tired at the end of the day. So it's really, really important to have a spot uh, where you can put your Portland. Um, we use 47 pound bags. Those are the kind of the norm. Uh, some places around the country, you can't get them. So the big 94 pound bags, they'll all fit in here. There's enough space to put about 45 bags of uh, the 47 pounders. They'll stack right in here. Uh, and if you do the math on that, that is going to get you pretty much a full day, 500, 550 feet, depending on what size of curb you're getting. So this is really important to have that in there. It is, <clears throat> you know, closed so it's not exposed to the weather. That's another thing. If you're hauling that in the back of your truck, you better tarp it because if you hit a rainstorm, now your Portland's getting wet on the way to the job when it should be inside. Um, what we used to do back a long time ago when we used the old trailers, we didn't have space for the Portland or it was really, really difficult to get out of that space. We would go to Lowe's in the morning, we would stack the Portland on top of the sand, okay, and go to the first job. If you hit a quick rainstorm or, or whatever, that's all getting wet because it's exposed. It's not efficient. So by doing this, we're making it easier for the, the curbing guy to to be more efficient and all that. Um, a trailer like this with 7,000 pound axles, a 14,000 pound gross, with all your materials and stuff like that, you can put about four, four tons of sand. We get weighed here, so it goes by tons, um, or four yards uh, with your Portland and your equipment, and you're gonna be right at that 14,000 pound range. Um, gotta be careful you don't overload um, and things like that. Um, if you wanna haul more sand, what we do with our crew, if we need to um, you know, do a lot of curb, we'll load up the sand, but we'll, we'll take the Portland and maybe put the Portland on the separate truck. That way our trailer is a little bit less, you know, doesn't weigh as much and uh, you're not gonna run into those problems, okay? Um, you can see here, obviously, nice diamond plate trim. It just finishes everything, you know, everything off. We offer many colors, uh, you know, probably a dozen colors, and you can match your curb machine and your pile driver to your trailer. Uh, this gentleman, David, uh, he's going to get his. Uh, this, he, he chose black, and his curb machines are black and lime green, which is going to look really cool. We'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but um, so you have a lot of options, and it's not just something, hey, this is the color of the trailer. This is what you get. This is what you got to deal with. Uh, we're kind of all about making custom trailers and equipment for that actual um, company, and it uh, it makes you stand out a little bit, a little bit more. Um, we can jump down here and I'll show you around. We do put hooks in here um, and we'll show you on the next trailer too. We do have a shade and a sand cover that go here. Um, so if you want to use your own, uh, let's say tarp, um, those are all welded on and, and those are good. 
Okay, so these trailers are gonna have a, a, a ramp door. Um, there's certain manufacturers out there uh, that uh, over the years had ramps that slid underneath and they just had a door and you had to pull that ramp out and put it up there. Uh, that works good too. Uh, the other ones were a little bit different. This is a, a, a spring assist. So you gotta be careful when you're opening these. Um, if you can imagine, obviously these doors are, you know, fairly heavy. Um, if you don't have that spring there um, or your hand up here, you gotta make sure that, you know, you're not just letting this go because it's gonna hit you in the head. You just gotta be, you gotta use a little bit of common sense. But when it gets to this point right here, that spring assist right there, it's really, really easy to lift, really easy to close. It's one of those things where we've, we've tested this a lot on different uh, uh, heavy springs and adjusted the angles and things like that so we don't have to use two of them, okay? Because that one gets in the way. Um, so uh, my guys have really narrowed this down to where one spring uh, really takes care of this, really takes care of this door. Um, you can obviously see the inside of this. There's gonna be shelves that are gonna be built in. Uh, again, uh, to me, it doesn't make sense if we're gonna do this whole trailer and get it all built for you, uh, that there isn't places inside to store all your stuff. Uh, you know, your colors on the shelves and your tools and, and all those things. These shelves have changed in the last, let's say, year. Every time our guys build a new trailer, they're always kind of adjusting and, and seeing what works best. This one is, is no different. We'll take a look at this. Uh, we have a, you know, a big L-shaped shelf here. We like to use six gallon buckets to haul our color in. Those buckets are a little bit taller, so if this shelf was a little bit lower, lower for my guys, those buckets wouldn't work. So what they've done now is taken, I can adjust this shelf. I can move it up, I can slide it down, I can take it out if I want to, okay? Um, now on the next trailer, they might adjust that again and do something a little bit different, um, which we may show you later. Uh, there's, there's other things that we're doing. Um, I've been asked the question, how come this doesn't extend? Well, it just depends. Uh, my trailer, which we'll show you next, we have that all the way extended so we can have a little bit more space. But that area right there is a great, a great place to put your um, concrete sprayer because those are kind of tall, three gallon uh, uh, sealer sprayer cans. Uh, they go right in the corner there and it fits great. Um, if you want to pop in here, Ben, I'll, I'll show you. So this, this whole trailer here is, it has what we call our water and power package, okay? Uh, and it's again, the most efficient as possible. You're gonna carry your sand, you're gonna carry your water, and you're gonna carry your Portland on the trailer. Okay, so on the roof here, we have a 100 watt solar panel um, with a solar controller right here. This is gonna tell you uh, your output, uh, you know, how much power you're using. Right now we're at about 92%. Um, it's gonna tell you the input, how much power you're creating from sunlight and so on. And so there's all sorts of things you can adjust on there. Uh, 800 watt inverter, uh, so we can plug in and charge batteries. And obviously we have lights in here, that's another thing. Uh, early in the morning in the summer when you're in here it's, and it's really dark, you gotta use your cell phone. Light, um, that just makes it really simple to have lights in here. Uh, you're gonna have a deep cycle lithium battery in here that's, that's gonna power everything. Uh, your main on and off switch. And if you get down a little bit, Ben, you can see underneath here. So we have a 100 watt, or excuse me, a 100 gallon water tank in here. Um, with a high output RV pump. It's electric RV pump, obviously it's run off the battery. Um, you can see the hose down there, that is plumbed through the frame to the rear, okay? So we don't carry any hose with us. Uh, unlike, you know, in the past where we'd have to carry 200 feet of hose to get to somebody's house and so on. Um, we are using the water that we know is good. Uh, this is city water, uh, it's clean. Uh, it, you know, if you're taking water from a well from a person's house, you can have color issues with your curb. So it's very important to bring your own water. That pump right there is about 70 PSI, which is about as good as any house as far as pressure. Okay, so that goes right through the frame and I'll show you where it comes out in the end. Um, but basically, uh, it's water on demand. All you gotta do is hit the trigger and, and you're ready to go. Um, you can see there's a fill hose from the outside. Um, in the past, we had to drop the door, uh, run our hose inside to fill the tank. Uh, now we can just put the hose right in through the outside and that fills that, that water tank and we're ready to go. So every morning, you know, basically when they get back from work in the day, they're, everything is filled in here, the Portland's filled, and you're ready to roll in the morning. So if we want to just take a look on the outside, you can see that little filler cap. Okay, so you're going to stick your, you're going to put your hose right in here. 
and that will, you know, if it starts to overfill, it'll come out right here and, and that'll tell you that obviously your, your tank is full. Um, that water tank, 100 gallons, essentially is gonna take you through a whole day of mixing. Uh, that's the main thing we're concerned about is to have enough water to mix our mixes and make sure our colors are good. Um, if we do have to clean the street or uh, we spill something on the sidewalk, uh, there may not be enough water there. Um, for us and our crew, we always carry another water tank on our actual truck. Um, and we use a transfer pump and we'll just transfer water in there. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're good for the day. So this is, uh, this is where this hose comes out. And what they do, they run it right through the frame underneath uh, and it's uh, protected in there uh, with a casing. Um, but this is the only hose that we have on the whole trailer. We don't, we don't have to have 200 feet of hose hanging on that wall. And imagine this, at the beginning of every job, Okay, this doesn't seem like much to the average person, but um, usually the guy that's taking that hose to the house to hook it up is the guy that's probably getting everything ready back here. So in North Dakota here, um, typically on a new house, there's no spigots in the front. The spigots are in the garage. Okay, so the nearest spigots on the side of the house or even in back, and depending on where you're parking, you're gonna need a lot of hose to run all the way over there. Um, it might take him 10 minutes to hook it up, bring it all the way back, get everything ready, and so on and so forth. The problem is now too that that hose is probably in the way of where you're gonna curb. So now you got that issue too. The, the bigger issue is at the end of the job, when you're tired, you got 200 feet down, it's hot, it's 95 degrees. Now that guy has to go over there and pick up that hose and roll the whole thing and bring it back. For us and our crew, you know, we're, we're gonna empty the trailer every single day and that might be two or three jobs. If that's 10 to 15 minutes of unrolling and rolling, uh, rolling a hose at the beginning and the end of each job, and you're doing three of those a day, that guy's wasting probably 45 minutes. That you could be curbing and making money. This makes you more efficient, everything is there, and you know what water you're using. If you're on a farm somewhere and you're using their well water, it's a 50-50 chance that your curb colors are not gonna come out right because of hard water calcium and all those things. Okay, so this is really, really important. I get, uh, you know, questions all the time. Hey, we've been rolling hoses for 20 years. It's, that's the easiest. Um, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible and as quick as possible for my guys to get all their work done and get back here at a decent time of day uh, without being super, super tired so they can make it throughout the week. Uh, seven month season here in North Dakota. We got to go as hard as we can. Uh, every single day that we can because we don't have a full 12 month season like guys in Florida. Um, so as much work as we can get done in a day, as efficient as possible, uh, the grand scheme of things is to make as much money as you can in the shortest amount of time. So this is one of those things that's going to help you. If any of you out there are interested in, you know, have questions or whatever about any of these trailers, uh, you know, just let us know. Our office phone number here is 701 751 2705, so 701-751-2705. Or you can shoot me a message on Facebook or whatever, but uh, um, really, really cool trailers. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know.